uh, you know, Ryan and um, Townsend were running really good up front, and uh, you know, we thought that they were going to be the guy to beat the end, and uh, unfortunately they had their problem in the pits there, which I could not believe. And at that point I thought our day might have been over, you know, for a shot at winning. But then all of a sudden I watched, you know, the way uh, Carlos and, and uh, Alex were coming up through, and like, eh, maybe they still have a shot at it. And then after that last pit stop where, you know, when we knew, I knew that Alex was going to try it, and we knew then, all right, if he's going to try it, we're going to try a different strategies, and, and it really worked out that, you know, we had two cars that uh, had a shot at winning with two, two, two different strategies, and then, so to come home one, two is just incredible, and I got to, my hat's off to Brian Herta, you know, he, uh, he was a strategist there, and uh, like I said, I think he used some of that Napa know-how to, uh, to uh, get himself there to the end. I mean, they were on the field at the end, and uh, but they did a great job. I know Alex did an awesome job at saving fuel. I mean, to the point where he's pulling the clutch and coasting. I mean, it was, it was crazy. So it was, uh, it was amazing. You know, I, I don't know what to say. It was just a uh, you know, great day. I mean, to be a part of history, you know, to, to win the 100 running and then to win it with a 1-2 finish is just incredible. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a bit speechless. Probably there's a few number of people that are like this. My wife sent me a text almost immediately and said, are you surprised? And I said, not a much, not much. And I meant it because while he's kind of a quiet guy, he has been strong from the moment he got here. Uh, absolutely. You know, he's never seen this place until like a couple months ago. You know, he had no idea. And, uh, you know, he came in and was right on pace, was not intimidated from the first lap on, and uh, really went to school, used his teammates, and. And, uh, you know, uh, learned every day throughout the month. And, you know, I saw that he was very confident going into the race. And I'm like, oh, who knows, we'll see, you know. And, and uh, he did a hell of a job. And just kept his composure the whole race. Even when there were some problems, he still kept his head in the game. And, uh, uh, you know, like you said, yeah, I'm not surprised. But it's still amazing to be a rookie and with this, to win this race. And, and I just heard a stat that... A rookie won the first race, won the 50th race, and now the 100th race. Kind of crazy. Yeah. I, I don't know about you guys. I'm shocked. I, I, I kept saying, wow. Like, I'm like, wow. <laughs> it's like, I can't believe this happened. I don't even know what the next question is. That, <laughs> you could not have thought February 23rd, he said, I'm clueless about this. Yeah, he had no idea. I mean, he honestly had no idea. And because uh, he just was 100% Europe, you know, the way his training and everything. And, uh, uh, you know, he never even saw an oval except for Phoenix, you know, before this. And, uh, you know, impressive, you know, really impressive. I think, I think it really worked to have, you know, four really strong uh, partners, you know, all month long to help. And, and uh, you know, I'm proud to say it, every time we've had a rookie in our car, uh, I think we've won Rookie of the Year every year. So. Well, Brian Hearn has joined us on the see before we continue with questions. The first thing that came to my mind in, in just thinking about the history of this race, the 100th, uh, J.C. Agajini comes with Johnny Mass of the 98 car. Troy Rutman wins in 1952. <coughs> Ellie Jones wins in 1963. You've got that name and associated with the team, and now you've been a part of a couple of a pretty big wins with that 98 number on the side as well. Yeah, it's just amazing. I mean, <clears throat> i got to say... Uh, we had such a weird off season, <laughs> really. And uh, you know, this this uh, partnership with Michael and his group kind of came out of a set of bad circumstances. And uh, I just I, I told him on the on the paid parade lap there. I said thank you so much because uh, without without him, you know, I'd have been watching this one on TV. And what a difference, you know. We you know we worked really hard together, and uh, I'm just so appreciative of of the opportunity that, that Michael and his organization have given me and, and, and the guys that came over from Brian to Autosport. And this race is amazing. To be part of a second win is, is just beyond work. It's been great too, I gotta say, you know, the partnership's been fantastic. I mean, we've always been good friends and uh, it, was, it was great to have them back part of our family. So uh, hopefully this will stay together for a long time. Lewis, 
Hold on, guys. I got, I got Bruce here. I took the microphone out of his mouth. Right? Can you give him a yeah. Out of his hand. <laughs> uh, Lewis Franco Reuters. Michael, you know, <coughs> Pensy had four cars. Ganassi had four cars. You had five. What kind of challenges were there? And did the five cars make you stronger? Absolutely. You know, I think. Uh, one thing we've been able to do is use the five cars to our advantage. You know, we 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 uh, you get that much more information throughout the month, and uh, yeah, um, you know, I think uh, you know it's a great formula that we do have, and you know, because we do a, a really good effort on that fifth car. You know, it's not a half-assed deal; it's a it's a winning effort, and uh, um, and it just adds to it. It doesn't take away at all. And I, I gotta say, Townsend and Ryan were so strong early. Yeah. <clears throat> they had their trouble, and uh, you know they played a big role in, in Alex winning this race. Townsend, uh, Townsend dragged us around for a while. We were on, we were on a fuel plan. You know we, we were on this strategy. Townsend dragged uh, the 98 car around for a while. We were able to draft and save fuel, and then late in the race, uh, Ryan came around us, and, and uh, we were able to draft off him and save more fuel. And you guys saw how close it was. It, I, I think without without our teammates, uh, we don't make it. Ryan, in many ways, is this reminiscent of what Dan Weldon did in 2011, only with a little bit different twist? It's different. I can't, I can't compare it other than to say I'm just, you know, so happy. I can't, I can't under, uh, under, overstate how, how hard it was for Alex to do what I was asking him to do on the radio. You know, to drive to a fuel number that was almost impossible, but still keep pace and keep track position. And uh, you know we we had a few debates about it, but uh, but he kept he kept pushing, he kept digging, and, and he did exactly what what we asked him to do, and, and obviously things kind of came right for us at the end there. We're gonna go back and forth as best we can, so Patrick. Okay, then let's go back to that. How impossible is 36 laps? Uh, on that's possible. Awesome. <laughs> 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 I mean, that, that's a big number. I mean, right, that's, what, that's a huge number. I mean, the, third, the biggest of the first ten was 31, and that included a couple of pace laps. Yeah. Was that even <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Woo! <laughs>